Hey everyone, I'm Ken Whiting with Paddle TV and this week we're looking at the pieces of gear that I would never go canoe tripping without. Before we get started though, please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and the notification bell so that you get notified when new videos happen because they do happen all the time. We've got lots of tips, um, tricks, paddling guides and paddle tales. It's a series that goes on cool adventures all around the world, paddling adventures. There's a link in the description box down below to check them out. So what are the pieces of gear that I would not go canoe tripping without. Number one, maybe not number one in importance, but number one is an anorak. And when I talk about an anorak, this is a rain top paddling top, really. When it's nasty out, when it's pouring rain, um, this is the top I go with. And the reason I love this style of top is because it has latex gaskets in the wrists but it doesn't have these latex gaskets at the neck it has a very comfortable neoprene gasket there and that's the key latex at the wrist is great when you're paddling you reach up you're never no matter how wet you are you're never going to get that dreaded drip down the arm at the same time latex around the neck well, for me, latex around the neck sucks. Uh, unless you really need it, you need a dry top because you're whitewater paddling and it's cold and you just don't want water going down the neck, you're going to be upside down, then having something loose fitting, more comfortable around the neck is much more comfortable. It has a hood, so when things get really nasty, you can wear a ball cap under there to keep this thing sturdy. Uh, you can wear a toque if, or a hat, if it, uh, warm hat if it gets, gets cold. It has even um, Velcro, enclo uh, Velcro enclosure at the bottom so that it, uh, it can seal right up. Now, number two, spare paddle. Now, the spare paddle that I take on canoe trips is a breakdown kayak paddle. Not only is a spare paddle really important in case you break a paddle, but the, the amazing thing about a kayak paddle in a canoe, and this is a 235 centimeter sea kayak paddle. You need a pretty long kayak paddle in order to effectively paddle in a canoe. Um, the joy of this thing is that you can paddle the canoe alone with a full load of gear and someone in the front of the tandem canoe with a kayak paddle. That's really hard to do with a single paddle unless you're a, really powerful, and B, really good at canoeing, maneuvering with a, a canoe paddle. Even then, you cannot compete with the power. If you're fighting a headwind, it's not gonna happen. With a kayak paddle, being able to paddle on both sides, uh, even if the person in front doesn't wanna paddle, or they can't paddle, you know, maybe they threw their back or something like that, you, you never know, then uh, you have the means to keep going just by yourself with a spare kayak paddle. Uh, another thing that I don't ever leave without is something for campfires. And there's two things I've got here. Fire starter. If it's driving rain, miserable, it's been wet for you know all day, it's hard to start a start a fire, then these little things, like I don't know what where um, where these come from or what they're called, but this is a fire starter that kicks butt. This thing, you throw it in the fire, pile on little stuff on top and, and bigger stuff on top of that. You light this thing, no matter how wet it is, it's going to get a fire going. Uh, the other piece that you need to start a fire, you don't always need it, but it sure helps, is some type of folding saw. Now, this is a pretty big folding saw, even though it's fairly lightweight. It is on the big side for canoe tripping, depending on how many portages you have to do. I mean, right now we're on, in Killarney Provincial Park. We just finished a two mile portage today and you know we carried stuff like this. So that's how important it is to, for me. The cool thing about this thing, it's, it's protected when you're carrying it, but it turns into a, uh, a sweet little bow saw. Tighten it up, yeah, 
slammer shut and now I mean it's tight this sucker here can hack through some big logs uh, limbs really quick uh, you know when you need to make campfire it's cold weather you just like campfires in general and you go through a lot of wood you need a good saw I like campfires all right next thing a good waterproof map case of course you need a map if you don't need a map well it's not uh, well if you're going without a map that's another issue altogether but if you're going to bring a map you can get maps that are waterproof and they they do work but it's really worth investing in a solid map case like this that seals is watertight because even the waterproof maps with wear and tear when you're open and closed and wind hits them and they, they just get beaten up and they'd start falling apart very easily because of the elements a waterproof map case keeps all that uh, um, safe I got a bunch of maps in here I'm a map nut I love maps I can spend so much time just pouring over maps around camp um, so the other benefit of that too is this is basically just a dry bag right so you have another place on hand while you're paddling in the boat a dry place to keep other stuff in this one I also have a compass um, just a good thing to have on you assuming you know how to use it ah now this is a pretty obvious one but it's not just a thermarest or not just a, a camp sleeping pad this is it's it's not the biggest sleeping pad but it's thick and it's comfortable and you know what I am totally willing to take the extra volume to get a nice thick camp pad um, on a, a canoe trip to sleep better to have a good night's sleep so it still packs down nice and small no it's not the smallest you can get no it's uh, it, it makes your pack a little bit bigger but you sleep well I would even go bigger than this for sure depending on the trip last but definitely not least back up toilet paper <laughs> now trust me when I say that might seem seem simple but back up toilet paper toilet paper doesn't take up any weight you know it's so light but if you happen to have a friend at the beginning of a five-day trip let's say who somehow drops the whole roll of toilet paper into the thunder box and so that the rest of the trip you end up having to tear out pages from your book to take care of business you will learn to appreciate the value of backup toilet paper I'll leave it at that and I won't name names and that's it for this episode I mean there's it's not it I thought that was it <laughs> there is one more thing that is absolutely critical and the reason I forgot about it is because it's not in front of me it's underneath me camp chair when you're paddling when you're uh, portaging all day long working hard having a good lightweight portable camp chair is money now this thing here it only weighs three pounds and it packs down into a bag about this big and it is worth every little extra grunt and groan on the portage trails to be able to finish the day in comfort enjoying your meal enjoying the campfire on a camp chair especially when your buddies don't have one <laughs> So that is it that's it for the gear that I never leave at home I always take on every canoeing uh, trip of course there's lots of other stuff but these are the things that I thought that you might not have seen before I hope you like this video and if you did give the, the video a big thumbs up leave a comment down below I'd love to hear other people's ideas for the stuff they uh, they would never leave at home and stay tuned because we got lots more tips and tricks coming your way